Fox 92. Inside the Huddle is brought to you by your local Ford dealers. Good afternoon, Tampa Bay. 91 degrees right now. The tanning index is 8. And you know what that means? Football weather. If you're here in the Tampa Bay area, what a great day for football, too. Kickoff coming up at 7 o'clock tonight. The weather should be perfect throughout the evening. Traffic along Dale Mabry Highway is okay right now, but it's going to be picking up as game time approaches. And, of course, if you're out there on Dale Mabry, look at around at the faces of the fans. There's excitement being generated by these brand-new Buccaneers under Sam White. It's been a long, long time since we've had a winner. In fact, let us now recollect. 1979 was the year, and here's an old Bucks tune you may enjoy. Hey, those were the Bucks of 1979. They've been horrible since then. You're sick of it, I'm sick of it. Are they gonna get any better? Let's find out. I think uh, chapel service uh, bonds a team closer together, uh, and uh, I think it uh, helps ball players understand a little more about uh, themselves. Let me ask you this: It's the fourth quarter. Your dog tired. You got the short fuse working. You're Henri as a bull. You've been going at it all game with the guy across the line from you. Close score. You line up. Next play, you end up on the bottom of the pile. The guy you've been going against all day spits in your face, he gives you a, a cheap shot, and you start bragging. What would your response be to that? I think uh, if you believe in something, then it will happen. If you believe you're a good football player, then it will happen. Food for thought from Floyd Peters, and food for fuel. It's three hours before game time. The players have plenty of choices. Variety's no problem. But unlike most cafeteria scenes, the mood here is quiet. Each player is thinking about knowing that his future in the NFC may be decided in the hours to come. Game. We are rehearsing the real thing. And nobody go out there with anything in their mind. You can't have a faint heart and you can't have any reservations. Everybody physical, everybody up in the bit. When we hit that field, there's nothing left to say. This is a big game. We're practicing to beat the Phoenix Cardinals. We're practicing to be a championship football team. I think this year, um, with Sam coming in, um, with his attitude, the way he's going about things, the way he's talking to the players about trying to be like a champion, trying to play like a champion, practice like a champion, act like a champion. I think it's rubbing off on a lot of guys. It is everything you've got on that football field. And if your guy, your friend, your buddy, down just a little bit, anything happens on that, you be to his rescue right now. We don't want anybody walking off that field feeling like he doesn't have any friends. He's got everybody else as his friend. Pump each other up, no matter what happens. Let's look like a different football team. 400 yards, that's where we're at. 100 per quarter, 400 yards, we'll win the ball. 
if you put too much pressure, say, on winning opening day or too much pressure on this game, ha we have to win this game because that game is going to be over and you're either going to win or lose. you got a 50-50 shot. Uh, what are you going to say then if you didn't win? But you can say, you can set some goals that if you achieve them, you should win. All right, be at the stadium no later than 5 o'clock. Be ready to play. Okay. Don't forget to complete the pass. Don't yeah. forget to take the ball from center. And if you hand it to the other guy, put it in his stomach. Don't put it on his hind hip. Usually a very private time for coaches and players. The drive to the stadium, rarely shared with anyone else but a teammate. We share it with Sam White, Lloyd Peters, Broderick Thomas, and Vinny Testaverde. Okay. I like to be kind of left alone when I'm going uh, to the stadium. I don't mind riding with another coach because he is in a similar mood. I don't like to ride with people that uh, are happy and talking about what they're going to do after the game. Uh, I don't like to meet with my, uh, my relatives, even in a strange city. I don't like to be around uh, non-football people before a game. <laughs> The morale's good. The atmosphere is good. I don't think the players um, are suspicious of us. I think that they, you know, they trust us as much as they can after such a short. I want, I want to see if a couple of those young guys can hold their weight for a whole half. You know what I'm saying? In other words, you know, some 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 guys are like mules. They don't, they don't, they don't get. They don't until they get lathered up. They don't. They don't really. I make had three it or four guys last week that would play 38 plays. That's a, a half. Right before the game, you know, I might get in my car and turn on my music, and it's normally it's rap music, um, it's real, it's real hardcore rap, gangster music. You know, listen to Big Mellow, it's the guy I grew up with. Uh, listen to um, Scarface, those guys from Houston. You know, just that real hardcore rap. It's. Uh, uh, it kind of makes you want to bring out all your frustrations, you know. You just kind of can sit there and listen and visualize, and you start to sweat. And I mean, you really want to go out and get busy. Go ahead, I'll wait out here. Okay. I just need to get the sideline sheet, Randy, that I'm ready. Game day programs. Shortcut through Floyd's office. Hey, this is Floyd's here? Yeah. We need four tickets. Well, we're going to have some rain. Tonight, too. What Weich is really hoping is that the Falcons don't rain on his parade. Oh, my paper. Okay, here we go. Game number two. I hope they're vocal. I hope we got a good crowd. If we just got to convince our fans that, uh, that we're headed the right direction, but things aren't, they may not happen just instantly. You don't lose for nine years and then suddenly bring in a new player or a new coach or anything else and things just change for the next play, the next game. They do take a little time. I think Coach Weiss can uh, turn the program a little bit with an open offense. First game jitters are out of their system after the first hit, and now they get down to uh, business playing uh, like the pros are supposed to do. The players get inspiration from many different sources. For Broderick Thomas, a side trip to the mall for some game preps on CD. I don't sleep on game nights. I try to get my sleep on. Uh, I try to get my sleep during the week because on Friday, Saturday, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm fairly rested. But on uh, Saturday night, I just don't get any sleep and just thinking about a little bit of destruction. And I go put that on the, on the greens and go enjoy myself.
appreciate your uh, applause there. I hope we're doing a lot of that this evening. Is everybody going to the game? Everybody's going to I appreciate your support, and uh, I'm hoping this year comes fast. I'll tell you this, the players are getting better and better. They're feeling like they're going to win more and more every every practice. This game will be better than last week. Next week will be a little better. Don't be sitting on your hands. We need you screaming and hollering and being a little bit like dessert kind of people. You hear the stands. I tell you when you hear it the most is when it's quiet because then you can hear individual voices. <laughs> you, know, you can hear exactly what they said and what verb they used. It's like a baby in its infancy. We're taking our first step and, and uh, tonight we're going to take our second step. And, and see by the end of the preseason if we can walk all the way across the room. <laughs> like that. They finally start selling my jerseys. Very big. I just kind of sit in my car and, and pray a little bit. I think uh, go through a spiritual ritual uh, before each game on the, on the drive over to the stadium. That's uh, just a little poem that uh, Father Leo, our team priest that I had at the University of Miami, he sent me last year, he wrote it, and something that I read through uh, on a daily basis, and uh, especially before a big game, you know. And pretty much that, that's it for, for saying the prayers and, and things like that is on the way over to the stadium, because once I get to the stadium, I like to stay focused on what my job is going to be uh, during uh, the game, you know, and concentrating on the plays and the defenses. So uh, that's what I do on my drive over. you to sign because you never seen a game. It's you going to the first game? game and you got to win tonight. Okay. Okay? I'll get Thank, thanks, Claude. Good right. luck tonight, okay? All right, thank yeah, there's my ladies. Going into the stadium, Vinny is all smiles. Then again, he hasn't taken a snap or thrown an errant pass. The Bucks' highest paid player is expected to do everything right. Hurry, how you doing? Good. How's the baby? Great. Good. Thank you, There's the man. All right. Good luck. The greetings and wishes of good luck are over. For Broderick, his teammates, and coaches, it's time to get ready. You played that? Okay. Yeah. I can be the Bucks. If you had one thing to tell Benny, what would it be? See ya. Did you get there? Oh, it's busy. They have a good ball club. <laughs> that would be <laughs> new. Go Bucks! I think they're gonna go 16 and 0. 16 and 0. 16 and 0. We were hoping. What do you mean you're an Atlanta fan? What do you mean you like Atlanta? Are those Buck Burgers? They sure are. Yeah. <laughs> Say you like the Bucks. Say it. <laughs> Win. Win. We're gonna win today. What's the key to the offense? Get rid of Tess Verde. <laughs> Get rid of any. I don't think he's ever had a chance to show himself. He had an offensive line that stunk. And got Vinny's number on. Are you a Vinny fan? Yes. You got a lot of faith in him still? No. You hope he could do it. Yes. yes. You're not sure though. No. If there's one sure. thing you could tell him that might help him along, what might it be? Probably believe in himself. Like that he can do it. What about Benny? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't even care to talk about Benny at this point. Steve the Bird. Steve the Bird's my man. 
Thank you. Have fun. Thank you. Bye-bye. Win. <laughs> it's a wait and see here because a lot of disappointed in the last couple of years. We thought they'd make a move and they didn't do anything good. Need a program? Special today. One for the price of two. I just want them to be winners. <laughs> I'd like to see them go in the Super Bowl. Oh, yeah. We're ready to win. Yeah, they'll win uh, eight, probably. Eight? Yeah. Wow. Be a heck of an improvement from last year. Yeah. I said they're going to win seven. Eight and eight. Eight and eight. Oh, but we'll be here regardless. Well, we've been coming since, what, 1976, when the Bucks first started. We've been here in the rain, the lightning, the thunder, the good times, the bad times, and we'll be here. The energy around Tampa Stadium grows as game time approaches. Fans start to revel in the spirit of football. But not but 300 yards behind me in the Buccaneers locker room. With one hour to go before kickoff, the team begins to put on its game face. Usually before, uh, the first thing I do when I get in there is uh, get a roll of tape and, and tape up their picture, you know, and they're always on my mind and I'm always wanting to do well uh, for them, for my family, for myself. And, and uh, you know, when I see them in my locker, it just makes me want to go out there and play that much harder. You know? George is all we got here. One of the Georgia guys. You're not from Georgia, are you? Listen to a whole lot of gospel music, you know, to keep me calm and to keep me focused. Come on, put your hands together. Where's uh, Calvin Tingle? Is he uh, Calvin Shaw? <laughs> I go out in the locker room and I walk around and I look at ball players and you, you jack up the ones that need to be. Uh, a little fired up, calm the guys down, and they're getting too out of hand on you. You sit in there and he waits to see you start backing out like this. Anytime he starts backing out, that's all I'm saying. It's good. The reason I cut off my socks is if you look good, you play good. After I get dressed into the sideline gear, I'll go out and I walk the four corners of the field. I want to see exactly how far the overrun is in the end zone. I want to see uh, if there's any, if there's a, a crown to the field, if there's any soft spots, wet spots on the field that we might either use or avoid during the course of the game. Weiss says hello to some Atlanta coaches, but not head coach Jerry Glanville, who he doesn't get along well, with. Tired of that, especially today. What do they do? They don't make you run laps. We don't run sprints. Or and then when I go out on the field, I always take one lap. I run around the field one time just to get myself ready, loosen myself up, pop a little sweat, and get ready for that game. Usually get a few, you know, sly remarks from uh, people as I go by because I'm a heel toe runner and I don't look real good.
If you want to talk about electricity in a stadium before a football game, you should be in the locker room before a football game. That's where everything has come to a peak. Everything we've talked about up to this point really is now starting to come into realization. The players know the game lies ahead. The fans are ready. This is when the coach comes into play and where Coach Sam Weish is said to be a specialist. He's a motivator, and it's within these locked doors that the motivation takes place. Making the winning effort is, is worth your time, it's worth the effort, and it's worth, uh, you know, giving all you've got. Greatest show on earth, baby. Yeah. Greatest show on earth. Let's go now, Biggins. Here's a pump line. There you go. There you go. Pre-game talks are important, and I think the players need to know that I, uh, how I feel, and the mood of the coach does reflect that team. And we'll say this before every game, because it's true before every game. You're a good enough football team to win every Sunday, every Saturday night. There's not a team in the, in the league that's better than you are if you don't want them to whip you. The tricks are to be sincere. If the guys think you're telling a, you know, one of those stories of three points and a poem at the end or something, they're not going to, they're, they're going to be turned off you expect to win or whether you hope to win and we expect you to win tonight we expect you to knock people around fly around out there do your thinking prior to the play you got to hit a couple of real subjects wide receivers gnaw at them like a termite on an oak just keep firing out the cut them down gnaw it on them run them off wear them down quarterbacks a lot of poise under there and then special teams win the game for us field position make the big play make the smart play Sometimes you miss, sometimes you hit it right on the money and boy that team goes out and they're ready to play. Other times you have a, a team that's flat. Part of it's a coach's fault. He didn't find the right hot button. Be physical. Every time you go out there, knock somebody around. Keep your poise. No mistakes, no cheap shots. They hit you, don't come back at them. They get the second guy every time. That's their tactic. And then finish this game off. Finish the last play like you did the first one. I don't know which play is going to decide the game. It may be the opening kickoff. Let's play it that way. Let's pray about it. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day of faith and bring it. All right, it's all yours. Come get back. I use the word electricity, but there, there are vibrations that go back and forth and they reverberate between the stadium floor and the stands every time you go into a field. That's the home field advantage. And the crowd goes crazy and the cheers start and the event happens. The game hasn't started, but the event has started to take place. That's when you start to get a little bit of a chill and you start to realize just how lucky it is. And I'll look at the guys lots of times and I'll say, men, that, old, that commercial that we see on TV is wrong. It doesn't get any better than this. building, the excitement's building, you want to get out there, and uh, you go out for kickoff, and, and away you go, you know. New bucks in town now. I visualize, you know, just going out and playing like a gangbuster, you know, or just like winning a war, you know, we're sitting behind barracks and sitting there shooting at each other, and I intend to win. This is as good as it gets right here. Let's go out and just have a good time and do the things you do best. And we rock. Willis is letting his teammates on the special teams. Here's the kickoff by Willis. And Moore awaits at about the seven. He'll bring it up right up the middle, finds a wedge of blockers, breaks by one tackler. But he's one of the most emotional guys on this football team. He, when he gets ready for a football game, he gets ready. I play football the old style way. 
you know, hit them square in the mouth and get them to talk about it or whatever I feel like doing. And, you know, I intend, for them, I intend for them to back down. And if not, I just hit them a little bit harder the next time until they start backing down, you know, it's kind of like that. He's a, a, a proud man. He's a powerful man. He's a great athlete. He has unbelievable quickness and speed. He has the talent to be in the Pro Bowl and should be in the Pro Bowl. And he's like all young people growing up. He's got to channel all his energy to a positive approach. You know what I'm saying? You know, I just I like that I like to win. I'm so loose and I hate to lose at anything. Floyd is uh, Floyd's one of those rough, tough-looking guys who uh, is really a, quite a gentle man in, uh, in the quiet moments. He's got a lot of feelings for his players. Come on, take it! Yeah. Come on. A team that you take over early, you need all of that motivation and that drive, and even the the uh, ball players are ha literally have to learn how to win. You understand what I'm saying? I, we have to be able to alter our cover. If you can't run with the guy, and you got to bait him and back off a little bit at the last minute, give yourself a cushion. Or you got to jam the out of him and not let him just take off on your runner. The enthusiasm uh, is lost in them when they've been on a downer for a long time, and I'm talking about years. Then you've got to literally grab by the bootstraps and jack them up and get them going. Do you see where you line up in? Do you see where you line up in? Is there any question? It's early in the game, and Peter's young defense has responded for now. They're doing what their coach has asked. I think, with, you know, the way Sam goes about things and what he expects out of a quarterback, I think uh, a leadership role comes natural. Well, if you win right, right away, you may be, you may have some temporal success. You may have some temporal cheers for the moment. But then the standards change. Okay, that's winning. Now we expect you to do at least that and better from now on. What you want is you want to build so that you can respond to those demands down the road, uh, which means you've got to have some long-range plans. And in, in doing so, you may have to develop some players or some part of your game that, uh, in, uh, you know, while you develop it, you may not win a game or two, but you know you're on the way. Behind Weish, the wisdom of 17 years in the NFL, quarterback Steve DeBerg. Side of the over. Things are going well. The Bucks lead by a touchdown, but Atlanta poses its first threat of the night. Weish is so involved, he walks with the defense onto the field. Always a pep talk, always an encouraging word. We're going to try to win the first game and not lose another one thereafter, but we know the game is tougher than that. But in the long run, we're going to build a foundation. In the NFL, words may be nice, but execution is what works. The Bucks' defense breaks down, and the Falcons earn a quick score. So, so far, the Bucks are showing a lot of spirit and a lot of spark. Will it continue? We're going to find out momentarily. The Bucks in the lead, 10 to 7 at halftime. We'll be back. Let's take a timeout. <laughs> Parts. He's got all the skills. He's got all the God-given gifts. He's made all the effort that anybody. Half the booze, half the jersey here are for our good friend number 14, Ben Justin Bird. He's got to have a good showing in the second half, or they may bring the guy out of the stadium. I have all the 
the confidence of the world in this guy. What do you think they need to do to win? Get rid of Vinny. Get rid of who? Vinny. What would you tell Vinny? I tell him he had lost. Um, how do I handle it? I don't know. I guess uh, everybody's different, you know. I, I just try not to think about it much, and I know I'm a better quarterback than than what uh, the stats indicate or our team record indicates, and I just have to go out and try and prove that. And, and by trying to prove that, I have to uh, concentrate on on the mental part of the game and try not to make uh, mental mistakes and try and help this team get directed in the right direction so we can win some games and. and as long as I continue to do that, I know uh, I'm taking the right approach towards a winning attitude. It is first down Tampa Bay. They move toward our right. He'll take the snap and drop the throw. Puts it downfield. Airs it out. He has a receiver at the 47. Mark Carrier dies to make the grab. Well, I think uh, this gives me the best chance to be successful um, with the chemistry of having Sam Weich uh, helping coach the quarterbacks. You know, Sam's coached some great quarterbacks in the past. Uh, having an offensive system that's been proven before that's been to the Super Bowl, um, you know, with those combination of things, I think uh, it'll be a much better year for all of us. I'm going to stick with Vinny. I followed Vinny at Miami, and he pleased me there, and I think a lot of it had to do with the team around them here, the coaching. I think Vinny still has it to be a great quarterback. Unfortunately for Testaverde, the bad moments have overshadowed the good, and always there have been excuses. With Weish and this coaching staff, there are no more excuses. The coaching staff is doing the job, I think. If you could tell Coach Sam Weish one thing, what would it be? Keep the offense like he's doing. Yes. Keep it exciting. You just have to keep plugging. That's part of what makes this game so much fun. It's totally unpredictable competition. Nobody knows where it's going to go. And, and what every offense tries to do, if they try and test out, as we mentioned earlier, see what you've got up front with some of these young guys. Come on and test them again up front, see what they're made of, and then they'll begin to go back up too, because that's where their success lies too, putting the ball in the air. And it's like a deck of cards that you stack up like a castle. You pull one out and it just cl starts collapsing on you. And, and it was obviously happening bad and we were now behind. It's, and, and ours, you know, it's gee, every time we had a turnover in that game, the opponent scored on us. <laughs> we played good football while we were confident, going three and out. Maybe they go four or five plays and we stop them. As soon as there was a fumble or an interception, they scored every time on that game. And so that shows you emotional immaturity. In the fourth quarter, it looks like so many Bucks games of the past. Atlanta is on a roll, and the Bucks appear to be free-falling to another loss, the kind of finish Bucks fans have come to expect. Hey, do you think you're supposed to look over to the sidelines of the defense? One of the guys in the running back right? You can hear the mood of the crowd. It, 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 is, it does draw a response from the, the players. <clears throat> and I had heard the stories that the Bucks had had leads before in the past, but they couldn't quite hold on in the same old, and I could hear almost in my mind people telling me those stories. I don't think I heard it coming from the stadium as much as I could recall the stories and saying, boy, this is the situation I heard about. Is anybody tired here yet? Hell no! I didn't think I saw anybody tired. Now we're gonna just cram it down that throat. Craig, you got it. Four minutes, Bill. Okay, three first downs. We don't score twice, we haven't got any balls at all. And we looked at each other as an offense and we said we're going to score two more touchdowns. We didn't say we're going to win the game. 
We said, two more touchdowns. You got five and a half minutes to get it done, and we did it. Motion from Testaverde when Weiss decides field goal on fourth and short. In the Ray Perkins era, an outburst like that by Vinny would have been unthinkable. Weiss, who seeks and accepts counsel from his staff and players, rethinks the decision and decides to go for it. Given a second chance, the offense scores and Tampa Stadium erupts. Bucks fans are not used to this. It was happening. Well, the offense started coming back like gangbusters, and so there's that belief and hope. You know, it's nice to talk about belief and hope, but if you don't see results, pretty soon you don't believe. And if you don't believe, then it ain't going to happen. Well, pretty soon the defense got caught back up into it. Gee, look at them. Yay, they're scoring. And now we started playing better defense towards the end right there and started sacking the quarterback and slapping them around and getting the ball back. And to me, that's what you got to do during the course of the game. A good football game is the score goes back and forth, and then somebody's going to quit. Somebody's going to fold under the pressure. Somebody's going to make the bonehead error and the other team wins. As it turned out, this would be the only win of the Bucks preseason, producing that wonderful sense of exhilaration, a payoff that makes weeks of sweat and pain and sacrifice all worthwhile. out something about this group of Buccaneers that uh, it's four quarters worth of football and they're good enough to win in the fourth. You had a string of about eight in a row before one finally went awry on you and that was a drop pass. Well, you know, like I said, it was a lot of fun. Uh, you know, once things started clicking, it seemed like nothing could go wrong for, for the offense. And, uh, right, if we had got the, if we had got the punt block, then we wouldn't, uh, we wouldn't have had the chance to come back. <laughs> one, two, three. It's one of those seasons that's going to be a great one. And uh, as soon as everyone around here realizes, all the teammates, and I'll be happy when the fans realize it's going to be outstanding, that uh, this is going to be something special. What's up, man? How you doing? Good, how you been? Good, man. It's good. Oh, that's good. You know, it's uh, one of those things where you just don't want to lose, because when you lose, it might look like it's all over. So I take losing, I take it very, very personal. Uh, it's one of those things where I would rather cheat than lose. No matter what it took for me to win, that's just what I like to do. I like to win. I've been a sore loser all my life and probably a die sore loser. But it's just one of those things where I just have to win. Winning efforts are important. Winning 
is not life and death. Winning is, uh, you know, winning at all cost is not the object of the game. I mean, winning at all cost means get lucky and win. That's okay. Cheat if you have to, but just win. That's that's part of the. That's what winning at all co implies. Making the winning effort is is worth your time. It's worth the effort, and it's worth uh, you know giving all you've got. I'd rather go to a Super Bowl and lose it than have never gone before. Nobody does this strictly for money, because you couldn't teach a man to run into each other at 23 miles an hour, and then, after they knock each other down, get up and do it again, unless there was more, you couldn't pay enough money to do it. My father said that 40 years ago to me. Nineteen ninety two and another Tampa Bay Buccaneers prediction. Last year I went three and thirteen with head coach Richard Williamson running the gun. This year it's Sam Weich. He's worth a couple of victories, but folks, this is the same Buccaneers team. I'm gonna pick him at three and thirteen in nineteen ninety two. Let's check out and see what David Logan thinks. David? Thank you, Tommy. After watching the Buccaneers for the past five weeks, one thing remains certain, and that's that the defense is still the strength of this team. But with five new starters added to this year's unit, that leaves me a bit concerned. As for the offense and Sam Weich's new system, there's no doubt in my mind it'll definitely make a difference. The only problem is that it'll take a lot longer than just the preseason before the players grasp it. Until I see the final product, my pick for 1992 is 6-10. Vic? Thanks, Dave. I'd like to talk about the schedule, because that's one thing that didn't change when Sam Weich came on board. The Bucks had an easy schedule because the Bucks had a rather rough time last year. With that finish, that's the way the NFL works it out. It's an easy schedule if the Bucks win early. I don't like those road trips at the end of the year like they've got, but if they win early, those road trips may not even matter. However, I have to pick a number because they've had so many personnel changes in the last week or so, I don't really know where to go with this team at the point, so I'll cross fingers and hope for seven. What do you think, Chris? Thanks, Dick. The Bucks secondary is still very shaky. The kick coverage teams have been horrible, and Vinny Testaverde, as always, is still a very big question mark. Sam Weish is going to need more than a bag of tricks with this team. What he really needs is more good football players. I'm going to stretch my optimism to the outer limits and say five wins. Well, that's better than last year, but it still looks to me like another season of double-digit losses for the Bucks.